Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, the spiritual teachings and mystic poetry of Sant Tukaram of Maharashtra District, India. I'll be sharing readings from two different books featuring mystic poetry or hymns of Sant Tukaram. Many Voices, One Song, The Poet Mystics of Maharashtra, including Tukaram. And another book called Tukaram, The Ceaseless Song of Devotion, both published by Science of the Soul as part of their very fine Mystics of the East series with scores and scores of mystic poets and Sufis, Sants and Sufis of the East. There are two basic branches of the Sant tradition of India, the Northern Sants, which are a bit closer to Sufism, like Guru Nanak and Kabir, and the so-called Southern Sants, although they're not really way, way, way in the southern tip of India or something, but in the district of Maharashtra. The Southern Sants are closer to the Gita, Krishna, the Vaishnava Bhakti tradition, although there's not a lot of difference between the teachings of the Northern and Maharashtrian Sants as such, despite these subtle cultural contexts that are slightly different. The Maharashtrian Sants include Eknath, Tukaram, Namdev, and many others. This is a reading from Tukaram, the Ceaseless Song of Devotion, a little bit of background, and then we'll dive into some of these mystic hymns. The term saint is used throughout this book in a special sense. A saint is a person who has reached the supreme height of self-realization. He sees God face to face and enjoys unalloyed divine bliss. He knows God so intimately that he himself becomes divine. His life is holy in all its aspects. He is master of himself and belongs to the kingdom of God. Through inner knowledge, a saint understands the divine purpose at work, not only within himself, but throughout the entire universe. Realizing the presence of God both within and without, he is able to willingly he is able to willingly cooperate with the divine purpose. As such, he is able to face the ups and downs of life with sublime serenity. He remains unmoved by the calamities of worldly life, because he sees the divine hand working behind every event. Holiness, fearlessness, and love for all beings are the marks of a saintly life. A bit more on the life of Tukaram. The year 1598 has been generally accepted as the most probable date of Tukaram's birth. He was born near Pune in the state of Maharashtra, where his ancestral home still exists today. Tukaram asks the Lord to keep him at the feet of the saints, lest he forget God's name. Says Tuka, even if he could not find God, he should at least be fortunate enough to live in the company of saints. Unquote. Being with such saints is described by him as more sacred than going to places of pilgrimage. Tukaram recognized that meditation is the key to God-realization. He pleads with the Lord, I wish to do ceaseless repetition with my body, mind, and tongue. I want to do 
only this. Let my mind be intoxicated with your name. Being basically a lover of solitude, he liked the lonely hills. He would sit there in meditation for hours on end with intense longing to know the ultimate reality. He did not move his body, even slightly when meditating. Nor was he ever afraid, even though he was constantly assailed by reptiles, scorpions, and tigers, it says here. In order to stay awake, he used to tie a cord to his hair and fasten the cord to a peg above him, saying, When my neck feels a jerk, my drowsiness will leave me. Unquote, a way to keep from falling asleep in meditation. There are accounts of other saints very much identical to that, tying their hair to something. I've heard this before. Initiation, spiritual practice and longing. Tukaram prayed fervently to the Lord to send him a master, to give him proper guidance on the spiritual path. He was quite confident that the Lord would commune with him in the silence of his soul. He confesses his helplessness to the Lord thus, I am weary even of my own family. What does it matter how the world treats me? Other than the Lord, I have no relatives or friends. His love for the Supreme Being was so strong that he said, I crave neither heaven nor salvation. I want only your name and ceaseless love for you." Unquote. That last sentence reminds me a lot of Rabia of Basra, the Sufi, one of the early Sufis, who said something quite similar. I'm not interested in heaven and hell. I'm only here out of love for the Supreme Being, for its own sake, without any motives to work towards bliss and eternity. Just love for the divine, bhakti for the divine, for its own sake. Sounds a lot like Rabia of Basra there. It was during this period of intensive meditation and prayer that Tukaram's guru, Babaji Raghavachaitanya, showered his grace and initiated him in the year 1619. This was the beginning of the truly spiritual phase of Tukaram's life. After initiation, Tukaram spent most of his time on spiritual practice as taught by his guru. He knew that he had to purify himself of all worldly dross by getting rid of the six mental foe, six mental foes which he identified as lust, anger, greed, attachment, envy, and ego. Nothing else would make him fit for the Lord's grace and his vision. So Sant Tukaram was on a search to find a living master, a living saint, a living Sant, and found his teacher, his Babaji his spiritual master who initiated him, which simply means that this living teacher communicated to him the meditation instructions on spiritual practice, how to go within, and all of the other precepts and principles of living a Santmont way of life. You know, all of the teachings, you know, are communicated by the master, but also the spiritual charge, the influence of the master. So, it's um, initiation is not merely an intellectual communication of knowledge on how to meditate the different steps and stages, Simran or Mana's Jop, the repetition of names, concentrating at the third eye center and accessing inner light and reaching the inner sound current and uh, descriptions of the inner regions or heavenly levels. But there's also the character of the, the teacher, the master, the spiritual presence of the master, the spiritual charge of his teachings. So it is instruction, it is mentoring, 
it is actually the consciousness of the master being shared with the disciple a spirituality that's not only taught but caught if you will the influence of the master brings the disciple into the experience of the light and sound not simply knowledge about the light and sound the purpose of initiation is not only to teach people how to meditate but bring them into the experience of the inner light and the inner sounds the inner regions of consciousness Mystic poetry of Sant Tukaram, the spiritual teachings and mystic poetry of Sant Tukaram of Maharashtra, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Ceaseless repetition of the Lord's name. The one who repeats the Lord's name with every morsel gets the merit of fasting, even though he eats. One who repeats the Lord's name while doing daily work always has the bliss of meditation within him. One who repeats the Lord's name while walking gets the merit of performing sacrifices at every step. Blessed is such a body. It has no need of pilgrimages and vows. One who repeats the Lord's name both in the enjoyment and sacrifice of worldly pleasures is not bound by his actions, declares Tuka. One who thus repeats the Lord's name ceaselessly is liberated during this very lifetime. Throughout the mystic poetry of Sant Tuca, there are constant references to repeating God's name. I will repeat the Lord's name. I will repeat God's name. This is a constant refrain. It is the key practice to the Sant tradition. It's referred to in Sufism as zikr. Some call it the prayer of the name. In the Sant tradition, it's either called simran, or manas jap. Simran means remembrance of the Supreme Being through the repetition of his sacred name or names. Manas jap refers to a mental chant. For the most part, the Simran words, the sacred names, the divine names are repeated mentally within one's mind. I have heard some Sot Song talks where Masters and sadhus say you can say the names out loud for like, you know, two to four minutes, five minutes, something like that. If no one is overhearing you, because they are secret mantras, secret names, you can express those names, sing those names, chant those names verbally, get centered, and then switch to manas jap or mental repetition. For the most part, it is a mental repetition of sacred names done within one's mind with the tongue of thought as they say it takes you further within it's a higher practice than verbal chant takes you inside and this is the foundation this is the first meditation practice of Sant Mat and of course um, this practice is done throughout the day when anyone who is a follower of Sant Mat a satsangi an initiate a disciple of a living master, um, this is done as a spiritual technique, spiritual exercise, as often as possible throughout the day in order to refocus, to re-center, to cast out anxiety, to just relieve stress, to be in the moment once again, to refresh, to reboot, to stay in a more pure state to come back to that state, to cast out, you know, negative energies, negative influences, and 
refocus once again on one's sacred names. Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection called it practicing the presence of God. Other saints, East and West, have have had this kind of practice of the repetition, the repetition of sacred names of God. Done not only during their spiritual practice, their meditation practice, but as often as possible throughout the day to spiritualize life, to stay focused. More mystic poetry of Sant Tukaram. My master's blessings, thanks to my master's blessings, my heart is overflowing with joy. My master knew what my heart longed for, and he spoke to me fondly and cheerfully. When my master spoke to me in his infinite grace, my mind and heart were filled with bliss, says Tuca. Never miss meditation. Even if you have not eaten for a week, do not give up listening to this divine music. Even if your head cracks and your body breaks, do not give up the repetition of his name. Even if your body splits in two, do not give up the intoxication of the divine sound. When someone is this strong, then the Lord will dwell within him forever, says Sant Tukaram. Without a master, all scriptures are like the whispering of ghosts, says the sage. Without a master, one is perpetually in mourning. Do not even glance at his face. No efforts will ever liberate him from the wheel of births and deaths. Know that this human life was in vain, so say the holy books, declares Tuka, and so said all saints in history. Without a master, all scriptures are like the whispering of ghosts. The human body is the temple of the Lord, the Lord in whom are contained many creations, dwells within me, why search for him in temples, when the human body itself is the temple of the Lord. Go into that temple, meditate there, and find the real form of God, experienced gained through such practice makes the devotee realize that the origin of the creation and the creator himself are verily within his own being, truly within his own being. They exist within his own soul. The devotee discovers that the Lord has neither roots nor branches, that he has no family name, that he is beyond comprehension, Truly, he is permanent and immutable. The four walls of a temple do not confine him. Where he is, there is neither time nor timelessness, neither emotion nor devotion, neither salvation nor liberation, neither day nor night. My Satguru Babaji has graciously let me see all this, and made me one with the Lord eternally, says Tuka. Close your eyes to see within. 
The soul has been cast out into the human body where its light can be seen only at the third eye. The secret of seeing the Lord inside is inner concentration and practice. You can see the Supreme Being filling the whole of space, but you must close both your eyes and cover them with two fingers. By contemplating on the darkness, says Tuka, you will find the Supreme Being seated right within your eyes. Close your eyes to see within, says Sant Tukaram. Referring to a kind of technique there, I would say, uh, there are uh, techniques that one can use, or you can just sit in a darkened room or, you know, meditate early in the morning in a place where it's dark and gaze into the darkness. And those who follow the path of the Masters will discover for themselves that darkness is not dark. There is light coming from beyond the darkness. And there is sound coming from beyond the silence. Those were readings from the book Tukaram, The Ceaseless Song of Devotion, and I have switched to a different book now, Many Voices, One Song, The Poet Mystics of Maharashtra, a kind of anthology of several different poet mystics of the southern Sant tradition of Maharashtra, including more Tukaram, more Sant Tukarama. What can you claim? You've landed on earth, so wake up, hurry up. Give yourself to the one who gives everything. Your body is owned by time and death, and your goods belong to the god of wealth. What can you claim as yours? A giver gives, but it's the divine who's giving. A taker takes, but the divine is behind it. What power do you have? A living being is simply an excuse for all that has to happen. But you still believe in me and mine. So you waste your life, says Tuka. You still believe in all that perishes. So you ignore the Lord and work for nothing, says Tuka. This is titled, A Pure Heart. God has appeared in my inner eye, and sweetness now fills my life. I've come to this joyous moment with a heart cleansed of all stain, bathing only once in this place. I'm cleansed of both good and bad. Now that the Lord has come, says Tuka, my words are pure and sweet to all. This light, astounding this light, so different. Even with eyes closed, you see it. It was never lit, nor does it ever go out. The luminous soul makes it shine eternally. No color, yet all colors. This light is illumined by life itself. Today, God, in his grace, used my offering of the lamp of devotion simply as an excuse to let me experience this light.
And our final reading from Sant Tukarama is kind of a humorous poem about the character of true masters. It's called Not Necessarily Saints. Says Sant Tukaram of Maharashtra, They're not mystics because they write poetry, nor saints because they're related to a saint. Their names and costumes don't matter. Only those who face the enemy in battle are brave. They're not mystics just because they play instruments and drape an ascetic's blanket over their shoulders or sing and recite scriptures. Reading the Vedas and performing rituals does not make them saints. Penances, pilgrimages, and living in forests makes no one a mystic. Beads, cast marks, and smeared ashes, these don't make a saint. They don't forget the body, says Tuka. They're just people of the world. Not necessarily saints, just by appearing to be a saint. The mystic poetry of Sant Tukaram is very inwardly focused. Realms of inner lights at the third eye center, sweet divine music playing in the heavenly realms, descriptions of the soul's ascension through the heavens, through the inner regions experienced during this life after being taught the meditation practices revealed by a living master. I hope you've enjoyed these selections today from the mystic poetry of Sant Tukaram of Maharashtra.